is NTV. Alive using a helicopter, and this will be done in Moya National Reserve, a Simba Hills National Reserve, where you are launching this exercise. Roma National Park, Lake Nakuru National Park, and Solio Ranch. In Solio Ranch, uh, Waziri will focus on the white and black rhinos in the ranch, as well as other medium term medium to large mammals. The helicopter sensors will also use transect spacing of 500 meters to ensure close scrutiny of the wildlife habitats and ensure all target animals are sighted and counted. The helicopter team, as we are calling it, will also ear notch, fit transmitters and count runners in Savo East National Park Savo West National Park, Lake Nakuru National Park, Nairobi National Park, and Meru National Park. The second team, Waziri, we are calling the fixed wing team. It will count wildlife in both terrestrial, marine, and freshwater ecosystem. The team will undertake the sensors in Masai Mara ecosystem, Suswa, Naivasha, Nakuru ranches, Amboseli Magadi Ecosystem, Arthur Kapiti Ecosystem, Savo Ecosystem, Lamu Ecosystem, National uh, South Turkana Rimoi Ecosystem, Sibuloi National Park, Rift Valley Lakes, Lake Victoria, Lake Turkana, Lamu Vanga Marine Ecosystem, the four fox dams, and also undertake and a roller count in Garissa Lower Tana River ecosystem. The third team will undertake ground sensors. This team we are referring to as a ground sensors team. Will also intake, involve um, citizen science. They will use the local communities to participate and involve in the sensors. The team will be divided into four. The first group will count terrestrial endangered birds in key coastal protected areas and forested ecosystem in Kenya. The second group will count wetland birds within the Rift Valley lakes and other, other key lakes within the eight KWS conservation areas. The third ground census group will count amphibians and reptiles in key ecosystem in all the four, eight conservation areas. The fourth group will count Sitatunga. This is uh, one of the rare antelopes within the wetlands in the Western and Central Reef conservation area. Then the fifth group will count the three species of pangolins in our country. That is the giant, ground, and tree pangolins. The sixth group will count Tirola in Savo East National Park. And the last ground group will count the Tana River Crested Manga Bay and the red colobus in Tana River remnant forest. The fourth team, Waziri, will undertake aerial sample count of wildlife in Garissa, Wajia, Mandera, Masabit, and the Siolo counties. This team will cover areas of these counties where aerial total was not undertaken before. After the data is collected, it will be cleaned, analyzed, and uh, the national baseline population status and distribution report of different species of wildlife will be first established. We'll then peer review the results with the technical peers and wildlife conservation and management experts 
and scientists to enhance the quality of the report. The census Waziri will be undertaken with key conservation partners who will be either pilots or technical GIS experts to assist in data collection, entry, cleaning, and analysis, and in the final production of the report. Waziri, together with the uh, uh, Director General, we are going also to document the entire exercise so that we can have it as a reference for the future generation to see being the first exercise so that uh, the generation to come can be able to refer to this first national report. We commit to undertake quality work while maintaining international best practices in wildlife census, data analysis, and report writing. Thank you, Waziri. So, um, with your permission, Chief Guest, Honorable Minister, may I now invite the Director General of Kenya Wildlife Service, Brigadier Retired John Waweru, to make his remarks. Thank you, sir. Our chief guest, our chief guest, the cabinet secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, Honorable Najib Balala, the principal secretary, State Department of Wildlife, Professor Fred Sego, the principal secretary, State Department of Tourism. Madam uh, Safina Kwekwe, the chairperson of the Kenya Wildlife Service Board of Trustees, Madam Betsy Maitoyo, the chairperson, Wildlife Research and Training Institute Board of Trustees, Dr. Winnie Keiro, board members, uh, if any, I don't think we have any, but yeah, we are re recognizing them. The Director General, Kenya Maritime Authority, and the Director General, Kenya Fisheries Research Institute, representatives of the county government of Kuala, the representative of the County Commissioner Kwale, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I forgot the chair also of the Kenya Wildlife Conservation Association. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Let me take this opportunity to first and foremost welcome you to Shimba Hills National Reserve. This reserve is one of the largest coastal forests in East Africa and is also home to the endangered sable antelope. The Kenya Wildlife Service is proud to be lead agency in undertaking this, in, in this instrumental national wildlife census of 2021 who we have come to coin as Count to Conserve. 
as a science-led management organization, this census is expected to provide adequate information on the status of the country's wildlife so as to guide decision making. We all acknowledge that we are in a difficult global situation where the entire world has slowed down because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we are more than ever before being challenged to seek solutions for nature for our own survival. Therefore, working with my team, we are going to continuously improve our operations, reduce costs, multi-skill the teams, and employ new technologies to ensure wireless population is sustained. Further, in line with our strategic plan uh, on the pillar of collaboration, we continue to work with communities to better conserve our wildlife. I'm happy to report that the Kenya Wildlife Service and the Wildlife Research and Training Institute teams undertaking this assignment are professionals with immense expertise and are up to the task. In undertaking this exercise, the Kenya Wildlife Service is also working with various partners and truly appreciate their effort. I wish to promise each and everyone here today that we will have the outputs delivered on time. Finally, let me also thank the Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Najib Balala, and our Principal Secretaries, and the Board of the Trustees for the immense support I also want to appreciate my team from the Kenya Wildlife Service for the many sacrifices in conserving our wildlife. There is, Waziri, if you allow me, one other partner, and that is the National Air Support Department, whose director is sitting with us here, who is going to be very instrumental in us conducting this uh, census. So thank you very much, Brigadier Viambo and uh, the National Air Support Department. I wish to thank you all. Thank you, and God bless you. Our cabinet secretary is working. Thank you. Uh, the cabinet secretary, Honorable Najib Balala, all invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by thanking cabinet secretary for Tourism and Wildlife, Honorable Balala, for the initiative that he took last year to launch the Wildlife Research and Training Institute. I'm honored to be the first uh, chairperson of this institute. And at this juncture, I would just like to ask my colleague, board members who are here with me to stand up. We have Gladys and Professor Suleiman. Um, we are quite a number of board members, but the two of them have come to join us. Cabinet Secretary, we thank you because this has given us the opportunity to give research 
the role that it deserves in wildlife management. We are also thankful to Kenya Wildlife Service, the board led by my colleague Betty Maitoyo and the Director General for the commitment they have shown in leading the delinking process, which has been going on for the last 10 months, an important process in establishing the Institute. And we are hopeful that in another few months, we'll be able to fully conduct our jobs, our duties, as a fully established wildlife training and research institute. And we are also thankful that during this process of reviewing the Wildlife Conservation and Management Act, important amendments will be made to ensure that the science that we want to uh, advise management is actually entrenched in our laws it's all very good when we are all working together very well, which is what we do with the team at KWS now. But as we learned very well from America, if you don't have the law on your side, the institutions you establish can be dismantled very easily by having some wrong brains in the wrong places. <laughs> so we encourage this amendments in law so that we can entrench science and be able to continue doing this good work regardless of who is in charge of wildlife or wildlife research in this country. Now, this exercise that we are launching today, the National Wildlife Census, is extremely important. This is the first time that we are collectively trying to understand our wildlife resources in terms of where they are and how many we have. It is not likely that we are going to get every single creature and be able to give the number of every single one, but scientists like myself know that indicators are a good place to start. We are lucky in this country that through the efforts of Kenya Wildlife Service and many of our partners, we do have some good indication of what numbers of wildlife we have because of important projects like the Amboseli Elephant Research Project, the number of predator projects that exist in this country that continually counted and kept good data for wildlife resources in certain parts of this country. But we know there are major gaps. We probably don't know much about what exists in Northern Kenya. There are areas where we don't have research projects, ongoing research projects, and these places are important for us. They might actually be the last frontiers of wildlife resources in this country. So we look forward to a really informative, scientifically sound, and properly delivered process that will inform this country going forward where we need to put our resources and what we need to emphasize in terms of wildlife conservation. I'm excited to hear that we are going to involve the community and hopefully even our students in universities as citizen science becomes one of the ways to deliver this project. I'm also excited to hear that our partners are going to be fully involved because they have worked really hard in keeping the numbers and the data for this country. Finally, Chief Guest, the board of directors of this institute, of the Wildlife Research and Training Institute, We'll be going on a retreat um, starting Sunday, but actually Monday next week in Amboseli. And we're going to be considering the implementation of the delinking report because this process has been hard driven, very well done. And we're going to hopefully be able to operationalize the Institute by the 1st of July. 
So it is my plea, Honorable uh, Minister, that when this report comes to your table, you're going to action it immediately. And hopefully this baby will be fully born by uh, August of this year. You launched the board August last year. We want the baby up and running by August of 2021. With those few remarks, I am excited about this process and I look forward to a very successful census exercise. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I want to invite the acting chairperson, Kenya Wildlife Service Board of Trustees, Madam Betty Maitoyo, to come and make her remarks. Very good, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Wambua. Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, Honorable Najib Balala, who is our chief guest today, uh, the representative of the Kwale County Governor, Principal Secretary, State Department of Wildlife, Professor Fred Segor, Principal Secretary, State Department of Tourism, Safina Kwekwe, Chairperson, WRTI Board of Transit, Dr. Winnie Kiru. Chairperson KWSCA, Francis Nkoichoi, WRTI board members present here, Director NASD, Brigadier Odhiambo, County Commissioner Kwale, all invited guests, uh, the KWS team here, led by uh, Brigadier Retired John Waweru, ladies and gentlemen of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Jambo. Are you happy to be here? Okay, welcome to KWS and to Shimba Hills National Reserve. Today uh, marks uh, a big milestone in the KWS history as the cabinet secretary launches the National Wildlife Census whose theme is count to conserve. This count represents an opportunity for the service to know the status of wildlife and their distribution which will, involve the, which will inform the strategic decisions of the Board of Trustees and management in dealing um, uh, by giving, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> dealing with management of wildlife. The Board of Trustees will continue to support this initiative by giving the necessary approvals needed by management to effectively and efficiently carry out the census. The KWS 2019-2024 strategic plan is premised on three pillars, conservation, collaboration, and enterprise. Today's launch encompasses our two pillars as we seek to be a leader in conservation excellence and collaborate with our stakeholders to conserve and protect this God-given resource, which is our wildlife. As we celebrate and launch uh, this uh, count, we are alive to the challenges that conservation faces, which includes climate change, population growth, which continues to result in a lot of human wildlife conflict as migratory corridors are interfered with and also as increase in the cost of conservation. I wish to thank the cabinet secretary that during, that during this difficult period resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, he has provided additional subvention to ensure that KWS operations continue to run smoothly, understanding that the COVID-19 pandemic reduced our revenue by over 87%. Waziri, as you are aware, you guided the KWS Board of Trustees to support the operationalization of WRTI, the Wildlife Research and Training Institute. This exercise that you are launching is part of building capacity of Wildlife Research and Training Institute. We continue to support this baby until it's ready to walk on its own. And as the chair mentioned, uh, Dr. Winnie Kiru, they are hoping that they can start working by August. So we are going to help you do that. 
Finally, let me thank the KWS team led by the DG for such great planning of the event today. Waziri, I wish to affirm uh, that the board, uh, we shall process the reports of the census in a timely manner for onward transmission to you. I wish everyone in this exercise will have pilots, we have scientists led by Dr. Omondi, we'll have ground teams, we'll have security people. I know that you're going to do a good job and we're going to provide our reports on time. I wish all of you all the best. Asante Nisana and God bless you. And now it's my pleasure to welcome the Principal Secretary, Department of Tourism, Ms. Safina Kwekwe. Karibu, Madam. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Betty, um, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, Honorable Najib Balala, uh, my colleague PS, uh, Professor Sigor, um, the chairperson of uh, the Kenya Wildlife Research and Training Institute, uh, Dr. Kiru, um, the other chairpersons and uh, Francis of the Conservancies and uh, the DGs, KWS and their services, uh, colleagues from Kenfri and all the colleagues in the service of uh, tourism and our left matters, good morning. Uh, indeed, it's a great day and a major milestone. Um, I didn't know that we have never had a census of wildlife. I thought as we count people, we count wildlife. Um, so, Waziri, I think uh, this is another first uh, in matters of conservation. And of course, anything good that happens in conservation definitely is a good thing for tourism. Because uh, from where I sit, I see um, that uh, the outcomes of this census will be able to help us um, to understand better the endowment that this country has in terms of uh, wildlife resources. And as we understand these endowments, it will inform us on three areas. One, it will inform us on conservation interventions and anticipate the challenges that come with um, the conservation intervention, and therefore plan for their mitigation. As a, a chairperson uh, of the Board of Trustees, KWS said, one of the major challenges is human wildlife conflict. And where we sit in Kwale County, I think um, we have experienced this um, across generations. But I believe from uh, the outcome of this, uh, we'll be able to know which corridors we will need to have uh, more surveillance, uh, where we will need to invest more resources across the country to manage this challenge and others. Uh, secondly, it will also inform our partnerships within and across borders. Uh, from uh, where we are today, we know that we are in Shimba, the home of the Sabol antelope, and the challenges we've been having with the growing the population of the Sabol antelope has been um, something that we've known. But I believe from the outcome of this census, we'll be able to know, for example, how can we partner with Tanzania, which is um, less than 60 kilometers from here, and be able to have a healthier uh, sabol antelope population. Not just uh, the sabol antelope, but all other species that we've been having challenges in propagating. And thirdly, and which is more exciting for myself, is that the outcome of this census will inform our tourism investments in terms of where and why should we invest in infrastructure where and why should we improve or invent new products 
and attractions to expand our tourism offerings. And as we do that, indeed, it will inform our marketing uh, initiatives as we market Destination Kenya. So truly, I'm excited as the outcome of this exercise will benefit the tourism sector and all actors along the tourism value chain. You cannot divorce wildlife conservation and management from tourism. And this is a clear indication of why even my presence here uh, is, um, for me, it is heartwarming because indeed we are going to be the largest consumer and beneficiary of the census activity. Uh, so, Waziri, thank you so much for spearheading and midwifing the very first census. And uh, I am informed, wholly funded by the government of Kenya. So we are not a broke country. We can afford to count dick dicks, elephants. Only the snakes I hear won't be counted. But I believe we will get to a, a level where we'll count even the lizards. Because they are part of our wildlife. And we want to use them as attractions for research, attractions for tourists, and attractions for expanding our offering. So I want to say I'm excited and I'm truly grateful for the invitation, Professor Sigor. And I, I want to take this opportunity now to invite uh, colleague um, Professor Sigor to make his remarks. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Kofiko. Madam, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Madam Safina. Our Chief Guest of Honor, Honorable Najib Balala, who is also our Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Tourism and Wildlife. My colleague, Madam Honorable Safina Kwekwe, DS, uh, State Department for Tourism. The chairs of the two boards, uh, Kenya Wildlife Service and Wildlife Research and Training Institute, uh, Madam Maitoyo and Dr. Kiiru, the Director General of Kenya Wildlife Service, Brigadier Retired Waweru, Dr. Patrick Omondi, Director Wildlife Research and Training Institute, the Director General of also uh, Kenbury, uh, Professor Jiru is here, uh, Director General National Air Support uh, Department Services, Brigadier uh, Odiambo, uh, representatives of County Government of Kwale, the representative of County Commissioner Kwale, Matifo, who's sub-county we are in today. Um, senior government officers present, uh, media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, good morning once again. Uh, Waziri, um, this is a very important day in the calendar of wildlife in Kenya because the way you've been told, it is the first National Wildlife Center 2021. And we know in Kenya, when we are writing our population reports, we quote for human, the population for human beings 2019, before 2009, previously 1999 and ETC. So, when you look at data and statistics and information, you will find that you will quote a particular year. Now, for the case of wildlife, we've not been doing so because the data, the information we used to have was not being done in a manner which is also 
acceptable internationally and scientifically. So that is why for all those years, when we say population of elephants are about 33, 34,000, we just say it is about there. But um, this year, we are very excited that for the first time, we will be saying, after this exercise, the number of population of these wildland species is this. And you can put in brackets that nas the National Wildlife Census 2021. So it will be a reference material, not only in Kenya, but also internationally. And therefore, as this exercise begins, I want to call upon the lead scientist in this exercise, Dr. Patrick Omondi, and your team to ensure that indeed the exercise you are carrying out will be done professionally, give it the 100% concentration, because at the end of it, the data will be peer reviewed, so that after the peer review, it means therefore it will be authentic, it will be accepted scientifically all over the world. And so it will conform to the fact that uh, in 2021, we will be producing data, we will be producing results in terms of our wildlife numbers. And so I want to call upon the team doing this exercise to ensure that they become diligent, they have 100% concentration so that they give us the best. And this is, and the best they will give us will be used as a reference material. So it is quite exciting that we will be able to have data this year for Kenya as far as the wildlife numbers, wildlife species is concerned. And Waziri, this will go a long way in ensuring that you also fulfill your mandate as the cabinet secretary responsible for wildlife. Because when you look at the law, when you look at the act, it is expecting that every three years, the minister will be expected to provide information uh, uh, on the areas of wildlife species. And then after five years, the Minister of Also Wildlife is expected to give out wildlife resource monitoring report. So this year, you are, we are happy that you will be able to give out these reports being packed by data and also being packed by scientists. And therefore, your outcome and uh, the, your, your outcome and your expectation in terms of delivery of your mandate will be realized because of that. And as the people working under you, as the officers working under you, we will give you the necessary support so that this information is indeed coming out in the way it's expected. So I want to wish all the teams doing this exercise all the best so that at the end of it, we will be able to be proud of what you will produce to Kenya as a country and also to the world, so that we are able to manage what we know. And indeed, uh, when you look at the theme, it is talking about count to conserve. You can only conserve what you know. You can only conserve effectively exactly the kind of species you know. And so having said that, Waziri, it is now my responsibility uh, an honor to ask all of us to upstanding so that um, uh, our guest of honor, who is the chief guest, Honorable Najib Balala, can come and make this address and thereafter launch officially this very, very important exercise. Waziri Karibu Sana. Thank you very much. Be seated, please. Well, today we are here 
the very important event, which is the National Wildlife Census of 2021. It's the first time ever to be organized collectively and funded by the Kenyan government. Colleagues in government, my colleagues, uh, Professor Sigor and Madam Kwekwe, then the two chairs, my friends, Betty Maitoyo and Winnie Kiru, our Director General, uh, Brigadier Waweru, Dr. Omondi, colleagues again in the other agency. I see Bonanjue is here from Kenya Maritime Authority. We see our colleague from Fisheries, Brigadier Odiambo, you are a very important institution when it comes to this work. So I am glad. You are very active, and I enjoyed the ride on the chopper when you took me around. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, board of directors, colleagues, and uh, staff of Kenya Wildlife Service and WRTI, today is history because this is the time we are getting our data. Last year, when I established the Wildlife Research and Training Institute, I was a bit skeptical. How do we do it without jeopardizing KWS at the same time, but also deliver in time? I'm glad, Madam Chair, that today we are almost in the final age of the delinking process. I'm waiting for that report. You know, I scrutinize some of these reports before I can endorse them so that we can be able to move faster. But I am sure, first of July, we are done, and you can walk on your own. But I'm also grateful that this event particularly is one of the major national events, and particularly your event, because this is the most important event that you need to do of that data collection. But also today, it's important for us to understand what do we have, what do we possess, what do we own, as a nation, because without understanding the numbers and how much wildlife we have, we would not be able to have measures of both conservation, but at the same time, we would not have measures of mitigating the challenges. That's why we want to count the numbers, and I'm glad the science used by Dr. Omondi and giving us how methodologies are being worked out, methodologies that are internationally recognized. You are aware CITES is, across the, is around the corner next year. When we go to CITES, we need to have the right data, particularly on the endangered species. But I think in the last 30, 40 years, our focus has been, maybe I should remove this. Our focus has been on endangered species, anti-poaching, and illegal wildlife trade. We have not focused on management, on conservation, on research, on science. And I'm glad the work that KWS has done, Madam Chair, your board, and the management, on taming poaching in this country, taming illegal wildlife trade, which we know is not done yet but we are vigilant if it happens, and we are taking action on that. But I think we need to change the chapter, particularly on conservation, science, and management of our protected areas, because I think sometimes we have neglected these things. We have seen the numbers that we have of playing game. We are told the numbers of playing games are going down, declining. Why are they declining? We need to have science behind it. The antelope species, for example, the sable antelope that we have here are hardly 50. Sable antelopes in Kwale, Sitatunga, we are not even aware how many there are. The roan antelope, there are hardly 20 animals we have in Ruma. The bongo that we have in Mount Kenya, the ones captured are 50. The ones in the wild are below 100. The hirola that we have 
in the northern part of the Garissa area, Ijara. I know the conservancies have about 100 of them, or 150, but also those figures are not very clear. So this is the time we need this data to be precise, and this data is in the hands of the government. When we are launching this event, let's not confuse that also those figures we have, have been announcing before, those figures also are authentic. They have been done collectively with partners, but also they were on specific focus species that we focus because of their nature of environment and the way they're endangered. Like the rhino numbers are almost 1,600. The elephants, about 34,000 34, elephants. And I was talking to Brigadier here and the others that probably if we now expand our data collection to Turkana and other areas, for elephants, the numbers will, will be higher. For the giraffe from 90,000 that we have, for the northern area of Garissa, Wajia, and Mandera, Malkamari, again, Sibiloi, the number of giraffes will shoot as well. So we need to be precise and accurate in getting these numbers. And today, that is the beginning. I believe this event is three months scheduled. It's going to be on time because we need to get data, particularly to start you off as the institute. But not only because we want data. We want to have data to know how to manage. And you know, some of these animals are also very destructive to human population. And that's why we need to mitigate, for example, the elephants. What do we say this country's carrying capacity is. If we have 50,000 elephants, how do we coexist with elephants? Can this country take 50,000 elephants? Can this country take 80,000 elephants? I think that science I'd be interested. But we know, we need to know. In today's world, from 1975, it's a different ecosystem. To 89 to 2021, land use has changed. Climate change has taken effect. Again, competition with agriculture and explosion of human population is another factor. So these are important factors to be considered. And the most important, we need to appreciate the local communities around that daily get affected from these animals. They must benefit from tourism and wildlife, but also they must secure their lives and livelihood for them to conserve. I am very concerned. We want to maintain the goodwill of communities and the population in conservation. That's why the coexistence and balancing of lives and conservation, livelihoods and conservation is very important. So, Dr. Omondi, you and your team, I want more details. It's not just about numbers. I want to see details and science that gives us solutions in the issue of coexistence. I know wildlife is not about just maintaining in one protected area. Most of the animals probably are outside the protected areas. And this is where the challenge. We need to look at the issue of the model of conservation in this country. Otherwise, we will have human wildlife conflict daily. Currently, we have a pending bill of outstanding that we have not paid to human wildlife conflict to a range of 14 billion from death to injury to destruction from 2014 to 2021. So it is important for us to mitigate and address this issue. So yes, these are the issues we need to address. But also, we have neighbors 
And as we say that animals do not know visas, they don't know trans, we don't know boundaries. So the issue of transboundary, I'm glad you are covering in Komazi, so that we know the numbers in and out between Savo West and Komazi, Tanzania. You are aware that this week the president of Tanzania was here, President Samia Suluhu. We had meetings and bilateral between our two governments. Yesterday, I talked to my colleague, the Minister of Tourism and Natural Resources in Tanzania, Bonadama Sundumbaro, who I have invited him on the 19th of August, 19th of May, to visit us here and have bilateral. And we want to visit Masai Mara for him to understand the issues of transboundary and movement of our resources, but also our people, the issues of how do we share data and information, but also the issues as what uh, Madam Kwekwe has mentioned of the Hirola and the other species that we can import from Tanzania or other neighboring countries. This is a partnership we want to establish. But I want to make it very clear to KWS and WRT no public announcement of data without verification and approve it by approval by government. No announcement of importation or exportation of any animals without proper approval of cabinet. These are the policies that we have. So all those announcements that I hear around that we are going to import this animal or export this animal, they are null and void until cabinet approves. Because this is a sensitive resource, we need the government to be in the middle of it so that we can be able to understand science, but also appreciate what's going on in this sector. So yes, it's a new normal, we know that. After COVID, and definitely we need to remodel our thinking. And that's why I want to congratulate KWS for a wonderful job the campaign that you have done of hashtag count to conserve, that is brilliant. The investment that the Kenyan government through the National Treasury is putting in here almost 250 million shillings to do all this expensive program by helicopters, by caravans, by using uh, foot uh, soldiers on the ground, foot soldiers on the ground to do the count. And within the short time, that is a very expensive process. But yes, Madam Kwekwe, I know you are home here. Nanataka ni kupongeze kwa sababu wewe ni mojapo ya wale PSEs ni mekua na usiano mzuri kabisa tangu uje kwenye wizara yetu. Kwa hivyo na kupongeza na pia na kutambua hapa ni kwenu nyumbani Na lazima ukiwa nyumbani utuzwe kidogo. Yale matakwa yako ya kuwa hapa pia kuna shida zandov. Pia hayo tumeambia KWS na, K, na WRT, eh, RRTI waangalie shida hiyo. Na hapo awali nimeambiwa hapa Shiba Hills na Mwaluganje na maeneo haya yote, mazingara haya ya hapa, Hapo awali elfu mbili na kuminambili, mwaka elfu mbili na kuminambili, kulikuwa na ndovu karibu miatatu na hamsini. Leo ni meambiwa ndovu waliombaki ni sarasini na tano. Tuna kuambiwa kwa nini wamepungua? Wameindwa ama wamepotea huko kwa sababu maendeleo imekuja ikaziba barabara yao, njia zao au wamekwama savo, au wameingia mkomazi, tataka kuambiwa, science inasema nini. Kwa hivyo, hayo mambo. Kwa sababu, leo tumekuja hapa kwa maana, tunatambua mazingara ya wanyama wapori na mbuga za wanyama kwa mambo ya utalii ya Diani, ya Mombasa, na ya Kilifi. Ikiwa tuna bahari, ufuwa bahari na watalii wanaokuja kwenye ufua bahari wanaweza kuja kwenye mbuga zetu za hapa Shimba Hills na Savo Taita 
hata kule arabuko sokoke waweze kujivinjari na kuangalia wanyama wetu wako vipi kwa sababu labda Masai Mara ni mbali nataka kumtambua chairman wa Kenya Wildlife Conservancy Association Francis asante sana kwa kufika hapa na wewe pia ni chairman wa Masai Mara Conservancies tunatambua ile almasi yetu ni Masai Mara na tunataka ingare kawaida lakini kuna vijilulu hapa pwani pia vyataka vitambulike pia na lulu hii ni kama naitambua madam Safina Pekwe hapa kwale ya ufuo ya bahari na itakuwa mara ya kwanza idadi ya wanyama kwenye bahari yenyewe wanatambuliwa na wanahesabiwa pia mwisho iliyofanywa hisabu ilikuwa ni 1900 mwaka 1997 unaona hata unazeeka na hujafanya hisabu ya wanyama wako ndiposa hapla hii imefanyika kwa madhumuni na lengo la kutambua mbuga za wanyama na wanyama wa pori na wanyama wa bahari wako Kenya nzima baadaye pia mwaka huu nitatembelea Turkana County tutatembelea Wajir County tuangalie wale twiga walioko kule Wajir hayo ndio mambo ambao kama serikali tunataka kutekeleza lakini hapa ya leo ni ya muhimu sana tunatambua kwa rasilimali yetu hii lazima tuihifadhi na tuweze kuelewa kwa njia ya sayansi vipi tutakabiliana na shida ama yale matatizo ambayo yanaletwa na wanyama wa pori lakini vipi tutaweza kwa hifadhi hawa wanyama iwe ni manufaa kwa wananchi na manufaa kwa uchumi wetu kwa hivyo langu leo ni kuzindua rasmi sherehe hii na ratiba hii ya kuhisabu wanyama kuhisabu wanyama si vile vile unahesabu wananchi lakini leo tunahesabu wanyama wanyama pori wote Kenya nzima na ni ratiba ambaye imedhaminiwa na serikali ya Kenya it's my singular pleasure today to launch the national wildlife Center, census 2021 hashtag count to conserve it's my pleasure and good morning thank you very much service as well as uh, other departments uh, in government. I've seen the Kenya 
uh, Marine Research Institute, the Kenya Maritime Authority officials are also here, and will be part and parcel of this particular exercise. For the first time, I had uh, Najib Balala saying that since 1979, that was the last time we had uh, a census conducted here in the country, and maintaining that it will also include, uh, uh, you know, taking data of what our, uh, you know, the Indian Ocean, the uh, all the fish species that uh, are in our waters will be part and parcel also of this exercise. So what is happening here now is you can see uh, CS Nadi Balala now uh, will be shortly commissioning officially uh, the research team that will be heading out uh, to commence uh, this particular exercise. We understand that uh, there are, uh, there's already a team dispatched in some of, uh, I mean, in various locations such as the Mara, and uh, understand that they're already uh, conducting uh, uh, the research and, of course, taking a uh, census, uh, rather, the population of the animals in uh, the Mara as well as other conservancies in the country, as well as trying to find out uh, the animal population in the country. You can see uh, CS Balala there is in the company of uh, the Principal Secretary State Department of Wildlife, Fred Segor, as well as the Principal Secretary State Department of Tourism, uh, Madam Safina Kwekwe, and now it's official that Land Cruiser there is on its way out with a part of the research team uh, going out to uh, conduct the uh, data collection on the animal population here in the country. Now next uh, is the chopper that you'll be able to see anytime now taking off and according to some of the officials who are in charge of this particular exercise, uh, they're saying that uh, mostly the aerial survey of uh, what has been launched today is what will uh, be largely, uh, I mean, counted as one of the key uh, uh, key key systems to be used in order to achieve what this particular uh, program is set uh, to uh, give uh, the country as you heard at the CSA as they are saying that uh, you know that is the hashtag there the count to conserve that is what uh, really marks the climax of uh, this uh, launch and it's for the first time uh, you know uh, being done especially uh, on all uh, the animals in the country, the CSA that is, you know, want, uh, uh, like a couple of years ago, uh, the country used to focus largely on the endangered species out there in the wild. But this, uh, you know, uh, particular exercise for these years, I mean, in 2020, focuses on trying to establish the actual population of all uh, the animals that are here in the country. And this uh, will inform the government in various ways as uh, it will also you know, give, uh, you know, uh, inform on uh, decision making, of course, with this uh, comes with the resources that are supposed to be dispatched uh, in terms of handling various challenges that comes, uh, you know, in wildlife conflict, of course, also uh, just a while ago, uh, CS Nadi Balala saying uh, that uh, since 2014, if I get that right here, yeah, from 2014 to 2021, uh, there's an accumulation of a uh, total of 14 billion shillings that, you know, the government, uh, you know, uh, these, are, um, these are the monies that uh, have accumulated as a result of the human wildlife conflict. And uh, the key issue here of this particular uh, census, by the way, is to try and tame some of these uh, uh, conflicts that have, uh, I mean, uh, of times being uh, witnessed in various parts of the countries, uh, the wild animals getting out of their, you know, habitat and intruding or uh, clashing with the uh, humans and definitely uh, leading to various, I mean, serious, serious uh, uh, injuries and of course also with destruction of property uh, worth millions of shillings. So some of this is the amount of money that the sea is saying that, uh, you know, the, 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 the Kenyans are claiming and want to be paid uh, as a result of the conflicts involving humans and wildlife. So there you can see the hashtag count to conserve the wild, the national wildlife census, as I said. Now it's the flagging off of the equipment, the resources and the, uh, you know, team which that will, is tasked with uh, 
uh, conducting this particular exercise. Uh, take uh, some time, and it is data that, of course, the government maintains. It's a very sensitive information that has to be uh, authenticated and uh, to ensure that uh, the data that will be given out is a data that will be scientifically proven and even uh, uh, internationally approved. So those who uh, will be part of this exercise are very, uh, you know, they need to be alert and ensure that they give uh, very proper data. Those, uh, they are uh, the Nadi Balala alongside the Kenya Maritime Authority Director General, uh, the Game Free Director General, and of course also other stakeholders who will be part of uh, this particular exercise. Here also is the retired general that is uh, who is in charge of the Kenya Wildlife Service, uh, Waweru, and of course also accompanied by some of uh, the uh, officers who are also uh, uh, from that particular institution. And as I said, uh, that uh, uh, the government aims at uh, you know employing a proper technology that will ensure. Uh, I mean, uh, data is. Uh, you know, they get the correct data on the wildlife population and, of course, also take note on their habitats and, of course, also, uh, uh, you know, giving research the role it deserves in wildlife management. There is uh, the Cabinet Secretary, Najib Balala, boarding the chopper. That particular chopper is one of the, uh, you know, just uh, equipment that will be used uh, in this exercise. And it's about to take off. Uh, on board also is the KWS uh, uh, Director General, that is a retired, uh, Brigadier retired, uh, JM Waweru. And of course, also I can see some of the uh, members of the press also being given a chance to maybe take a ride and uh, show Kenyans uh, exactly what this exercise is all about. And uh, of course, uh, we don't know if that chopper is going to take off, but indeed, it's an amazing experience uh, to uh, just know how uh, the government is planning to uh, conduct uh, this particular research. Uh, one thing also that uh, uh, CS Balala has also talked about largely is manipulating, uh, I mean, uh, manipulation of data, uh, saying that there'll be no. Uh, the government will not allow any importation of animals uh, to participate in this particular uh, census, saying that uh, the officers have been uh, deployed across all the 47 counties and proper surveillance put in place to ensure that the exercise will be done smoothly and according uh, to the plans in place. And there you see says Najib Balala. I think now that chopper might take off and uh, not sure about that yet, but yes, I believe it's going to take off any time from now. And uh, we're here to give you all that coverage from Shimba Hills National Reserve here in Kuala. And uh, what we also understand is that they are very, very delicate species that uh, the government is really concerned uh, uh, to know, especially here in Kuala, we understand that the uh, uh, species of uh, antelopes that is sable, uh, which uh, is really key in this particular research, trying to know and establish how many are they, because they are also found in this uh, part of the country, in Kuala County, uh, with Balala also saying that it is uh, key to also know the number of Sitatunga animals uh, that uh, are available in the country. And uh, of course, we are here to make sure that you get all that coverage. Yes, the doors being closed, then definitely that confirms that the chopper is taking off. That is one of the choppers that will be uh, used uh, by the research team because I understand that this particular research is uh, will uh, use the, uh, the helicopter sensors, will use the transect spacing of 500 meters to ensure uh, close scrutiny of the animal habitats and, of course, to determine how many uh, wild animals are found in uh, each particular area. And I'm going to look uh, for uh, one of the key, uh, you know, institu I mean, uh, representatives of this uh, important research, and I mean, as uh, the census that the government is commissioning uh, today. I'm just trying to look for my camera person. Yeah, she's over here. That's Jen Katwiri, also with Karim Rajan, trying to 
uh, really have this conversation so that you can uh, have an in-depth of what is really supposed to happen here. Yeah, the chopper is taking off. And a minute from now, you can see there. Well, that's it. The chopper is already on air and that signifies the official uh, commissioning of this particular exercise. Here with me is uh, the National Wildlife Sensor Director of Research and Training Institute, Patrick Omondi. Uh, thank you, sir, for this particular uh, opportunity. Yeah. Uh, just bring us up to speed of exactly what you're trying to achieve on conducting this first National Wildlife Sensor in the country. We are trying to establish the national status of wildlife across Kenya. We have done pre uh, censuses before, but not in the entire country. We, for example, continuously counted elephants and our rhinos, but we've never done, as a country, a national wildlife census. So this is the first coordinated exercise, and we want to thank very much uh, the government, uh, through His Excellency the President, for supporting this first ever and we are looking forward to producing a national wildlife status report. Talk to us about the methodology in place that uh, perhaps the government is planning to use uh, to ensure that whatever the outcome of the exercise will be, uh, you know, scientifically proven and will be even accepted internationally. Yes, we are going to adopt the peer-reviewed methodology in counting our uh, wildlife resources. We are going to adopt total aerial count uh, in open savannas. In northern Kenya, we'll use sample counts. We are also going to do ground count, and in ground count, we'll be using citizen science. We use our university college students to join the experts so that we are able to collect all the wildlife population. We'll do this together with our other partners, like the Department of Resource Surveys and Remote Sensing, the National Museums of Kenya, the experts from the Kenya Marine Fisheries and Research Institute, so that at the end of it, we can have a national wildlife status. Just like you have human population status, we need to know what wildlife resource because of the role they play in driving the economy through tourism um, as a product. Uh, there's something also that uh, is of key interest to Kenyans. How long will this particular exercise take? The, um, we, this exercise will run between uh, May and uh, up to July and it is a wet season and um, we are going to use it as a wet season count. For certain ecosystem it will be an update, we'll know whether the population have been growing or not, particularly for the large species like elephants. But for some areas in Kenya it will be the first exercise and we'll be develop a baseline for that uh, population. So uh, hopefully will uh, be able to establish uh, the wildlife status uh, by August. We should be able to be done with the exercise. This year? This year, yes. And then again, any sp areas that require special, I mean, uh, in, uh, a special probably coverage or technology uh, for you people to uh, get the kind of data that you require? 
we'll deploy camera traps in our forested ecosystem uh, and also to try and uh, count nocturnal animals. They are animals that are only active at night. So in those ones, we'll deploy camera traps. In this exercise, we are also going to deploy satellite collars just to find the migratory corridors and the dispersal areas. We need to map them for purposes of developing ecosystem-wide management plan. So at the end of it all, when um, the report will be presented uh, to His Excellency, it will be a complete wildlife status report for Kenya. Where we already have existing information and data, we'll collect it together. And as a wildlife research and training institute that is new, will now be the depository for the wildlife data on behalf of the government. And we are very, very happy for this support and we are looking forward to the results and restoring it for use in managing effectively our wildlife resources across the country. And perhaps also maybe you can just give us a reflection on whether there are any specific animals that are of key interest. Yes, there are very many uh, rare species in Kenya. We have particularly in Shimba where the Honorable Minister is just counting now, we have the Sebo antelope. Sebo antelope is only found in Kuala County and we have less than uh, 100 individuals. So we will be developing a recovery plan as required by law. There are also rare antelope like the Statunga. So those will be counted. They're in the Lake Victoria Basin, the, the Rift Valley, in Kilowale Nandi. We'll want to know the numbers, the challenges they face. And the, we have in Garissa County, Ijara, the rare antelope called um, Hirola. We'll count them and we'll establish their numbers. Then Mountain Bongo, only found in Abadeas and, uh, and uh, Mount Kenya. And the few captive in uh, Mount Kenya Wildlife Conservancy will establish their status. And then the large carnivores, we will be able to have their numbers at the end of this exercise. And so you say we'll have a national tally. At the end of this exercise, Kenyans will, for the first time, know the national wildlife status where they are, and uh, we'll also be recording the threats they face. If we cite illegal activity, encroachment, fire, we see human being inside, all those things will be recorded during this exercise. And uh, maybe lastly, talk to us about the, because I understand that you've categorized this particular uh, uh, exercise to be conducted in eight conservation centers. Can you yes. probably maybe identify these eight areas, which are these uh, particular uh, regions that uh, are uh, key to this particular uh, census or the animal population yes. census? Uh, the wildlife resources in Kenya uh, uh, that is uh, managed by KWS administratively is divided into eight conservation areas. Uh, we have uh, where we are, the coastal conservation area which is headquartered here will count all the animals in the coastal area then we have the Savo conservation area which is the largest conservation area is our uh, Selu and, and Kurga of Kenya the Savo conservation area then we have Southern that covers Amboseli then Central Rift that covers the Great Rift Valley Lakes will count the crocodiles the hippos there then we have Western that will cover Kisumu, Kitale, Naslot, Trokana, Northern that will cover Mandera, and we'll also be looking at cross borders like uh, Kilimanjaro, Amboseli, Savo, Mukomazi, Mara, Serengeti, and uh, in those areas we'll also be de deploying uh, satellite collars so that we look at the cross border movement of animals. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I can also see that uh, there are other key government, uh, you know, uh, I mean, representatives of key government institutions who are here waiting for the CS uh, who's uh, on the chopper trying to uh, conduct, be the first person uh, to witness how this particular animal census is uh, being conducted and is out in uh, Shimba Hills. And here I can see the uh, principal secretary, the State Department of Wildlife, Fred Segor, and having a talk with uh, Mr. Njiri here, who represents the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Institute. So let me just have a talk with, a conversation with uh, the peers. Then, of course, also we'll also have a word with you because this is an important exercise that as an institution also you have to uh, inform the public on how uh, this particular uh, population census will be taken. 
uh, in marine and perhaps that is a question that uh, you will inform us better. Uh, but first, uh, uh, Bona Pierce, uh, we, we had the CS, uh, uh, you know, getting concerned about the level of human wildlife uh, in the country and uh, he quoted uh, an amount of 14 billion shillings, uh, a compensation fee that is yet to be uh, paid out to uh, some of those people who were victims of the human wildlife conflict. How is this particular census or other animal population uh, data key in terms of informing the government on uh, how to address these particular challenges? Yeah, thank you very much. As you've been told, uh, today is a very important day for us in the wildlife sector because uh, we are uh, launching, the minister has launched um, a counting of wildlife in the country. The exercise is supposed to take about three months, and at the end of it, we will be able to know uh, the population of each species we have in the country. And so this is important because it will enable us to plan. You can only plan for something which you know. So these numbers are very important because we will be able to know exactly what we need to do. In addition, I know there has been a lot of conflict between human and wildlife because wildlife also requires space and uh, there is competition in land between wildlife and human beings and so because of this uh, there is a continuous conflict between human and wildlife uh, as per the Wa uh, wildlife management act 2013 it is the responsibility of government to compensate people who have been affected by wildlife be it death be it injury be it um, crop destruction or also destruction of property. So, 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 so because of that act, the government is obliged to compensate people who are affected in those. But we realize since 2013 up to now, the number of conflicts have been increasing at a very alarming rate. The government is unable to pay as per uh, the claims which are coming. And that is why there has been a very big backlog in terms of compensation, in terms of the payments. But from 2013, up to 2017, uh, up to 2017, basically we've almost done 100% of those compensations. But uh, recently, between 2017 and now, we've seen the numbers are coming up because of the increasing conflict between wildlife and humans. And are we able to establish which are these areas that uh, give uh, these, you know, surging numbers in terms of the conflicts? Yes, we. Uh, as expected, you will find that uh, when somebody is affected by wildlife in one way or another, normally the first step is to ensure that you report. So in terms of the reporting, the affected people report to, to, to our offices. They report to KWS offices, stations in the country. They also uh, report to the offices of government which are within their jurisdiction. So we are able to get to know the kind of reports we receive. However, because of the many numbers, the amount of money which we get in our budget is not sufficient. And that is why we have a backlog. That's why when the minister was talking about 14 billion uh, money, it is because of the backlog for many years. For the last th two years, we've been giving out, we've been doing payments, average about 600 million in a year, 500, 600 million in a year. And, 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 and because the compensation fee is well over 1 billion in a year, uh, in fact, in, uh, in some cases, it reaches up to 1.8 billion in a year after, after it has undergone the process. So the backlog is there. So but which are some of these areas that report a huge number of uh, human wildlife conflicts uh, across the country? Uh, across the country, you will find that uh, one of the areas is Savo because of the population of wildlife. So coastal region is also is, is leading in that. You will also find that Kajiado County is also leading in those because of the presence of elephants. We have sizable number of population of elephants in Amboseli. And so when they are moving out of the national park, you will find that they will, uh, they, they, they will interact with the human outside, the, the, the parks outside the reserves. And because of this, it is how the human wildlife conflict comes around. Uh, it is it has been documented that close to 65 percent of the wildlife we have are outside protected areas. So it means the protected areas are are, 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 are the national parks and the national reserves. But um, the communities, the wildlife are also within the communities. And that is why we have also community conservancies and ETC. So because of the movement of wildlife between the, uh, the, 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 the parks going to, towards the communities, that is how we come 
that is how we create human wildlife conflict. So we say that also encroachment has really contributed to these rising cases of human wildlife conflict? Uh, not necessarily encroachment as such, because we, we, we have demarcated areas in terms of uh, our national parks, our national reserves, it is known. Of course, where people get into the, these areas illegally, that is some of the causes why the numbers have also gone up. If, you, if a human being, if somebody goes to the a national park or a national reserve, and then uh, because of the illegal activities, we are not obliged as government to compensate if something happens. Because you've gone to a protected area. Where we have conflict is cases where animals leave the parks, leave the national reserve, and they go to the communities. In which case, they become destructive. Mm -hmm. So when they become destructive, it means it is the obligation of the government to compensate for such cases. Yes. And uh, perhaps maybe also it's also worth noting how uh, does the, how did the government handle especially cases whereby uh, some of these uh, reports are being brought forward to relevant government agencies, uh, wildlife animals encroaching or rather, uh, you know, getting out of their confined areas, their habitat, and going into the uh, into where the you know human beings are, and we've even had some in some areas even uh, people threatening to take action, like even by uh, killing these animals. What do you? Do, what are some of the key interventions that the government uh, perhaps is considering to put an end to this particular situation? Uh, as as government, we've been continuously carrying out mitigation measures. Mitigation measures means uh, construction of uh, uh, offences, so that we are able to confine the animals to the national parks or game reserves. But uh, this is also an expensive exercise. We may not be able to have fences in all the, our parks or all our reserves. So where we are able to have a fence, it is one of the measures. Number two, we are also embracing the issue of coexistence between wildlife and human beings. Coexistence between wildlife and, and human beings. Because wildlife by itself, wildlife, they also require space in terms of land. So we, we, we want to encourage people to also uh, we coexist with the, w w among us these animals. But in cases where we are unable to, to, to by bad luck, somebody has been affected in one way or another through killing, injury, and etc. That is when we say government is obliged to compensate for such cases, undergoing some certain process. Mm -hmm. So apart from mitigation measures, we are also educating our communities to see how we can coexist with these animals. Number two, recently you saw the government employing uh, community scouts. The role of community scouts is to go to the communities and also educate the people to, of the importance of coexisting with wildlife. They are also able to warn if there are wildlife movement in certain areas, we also want the population so that they avoid such kind of uh, interaction with them. And uh, perhaps also I think it's interesting to know how much this particular exercise will cost and where are the funds coming from? Uh, this exercise is costing Kenya shillings to 250 million, fully funded by government of Kenya. And so the National Treasury has supported the State Department of Wildlife, uh, through the implementing agency Kenya Wildlife Service so that this exercise is done within the next three months costing Kenya shillings 250 million fully funded by government and I want to emphasize that this is the first time where the government is funding 100% in other cases where we were zeroing on particular areas population of let's say zebras, giraffes, lions in particular areas it used to be funded by our development partners and other stakeholders but this time around this full census 2021 on wildlife is fully funded by government and it has been launched today. The exercise will take up to August. We hope to synthesize and, uh, the data so that before the end of, uh, before we go to September, uh, the government will be able to, to be in, in a position to release the data after this exercise. And maybe as we wind up again, uh, what could be a reflection on giving research the role it deserves in wildlife management in the country? Uh, if you look at Wildlife Conservation and Management Act 2013, it envisaged the creation of two institutions. One, Kenya Wildlife Service, which is expected to offer services to protect the wildlife, to, to conserve and protect. Now, the other institution which was supposed to have been established is Wildlife Research and Training Institute. The role of this institute is to carry out research development and in addition also do training so you realize between 2013 and now it is only kws which has been doing this exercise they have been offering services protection 
and that's why taking care of ensuring that poaching is not happening in the country. And also, to some extent, they have also been carrying out uh, research in a small scale. But uh, the government has approved the creation of the second institute as part of the Act, Wildlife Research and Tech, uh, Training Institute. The cabinet secretary uh, inaugurated the board in August 2020. So this uh, institute, the board, the institute has been up and running, but currently we've not delinked fully. They should be delinking between Kenya Wildlife Service and Wildlife Research and Training Institute. The process is ongoing. And as per the minister's uh, speech today, this exercise should uh, come to an end before the end of the financial year, so that come 1st of July, we will be able to have the link completely Wildlife Research and Training Institute and Kenya Wildlife Service. And um, the data which will be ob uh, obtained from this exercise will be used as a repository so that the Wildlife Research and Training Institute are the ones who will be the custodian of the data so that they will be using it for research. They will also be using for to look at the areas where we need to do training, uh, this disease control and ETC. And uh, perhaps uh, maybe lastly, we uh, heard the CS uh, saying that uh, taking care of this particular data is of great importance and also issuing a, wa issuing a warning to those who are tasked with uh, you know, conducting this exercise, not to share uh, the data publicly. How important is this information? Uh, this, in this information is very important because information and population, be it human beings or wildlife, it is the government which is the custodian. So what happens is that at the end of this exercise, the, info the, the data will be, will be put together, uh, the information will be shared in the normal way. The, 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 the Institute and KWS will, 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 will clean the data and then present the same data to the ministry and the, the, the government. So it is the responsibility after the government has studied the data to release it officially. That is why the minister was saying at the end of this exercise, it is the ministry and it is the government which will release the data. We don't want to release a pass of data. You know, like any other... Uh, it has to be approved by cabinet. It has to be approved in the normal way in government so that we know this population of wildlife is this in the country. Just l like in 2019, it was the government which released the census for human centers. And therefore, for also wildlife, it is the same government which is also going to do it. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as I promised you that there are so many stakeholders who will be part and parcel of this particular exercise. And I said there is uh, someone here uh, that is uh, Mr. Njiru, who is in charge of Kenya Marine and Fisheries Institute. And I uh, will be a very key government institution to be part and parcel of uh, this uh, animal population census. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, maybe perhaps take us through, you know, we're talking about marine life here. What are some of uh, the technology that will be deployed to ensure that uh, Kenyans uh, will be able to identify the kind of species in terms of number uh, what are uh, inside our Kenyan waters? Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Mutai. Uh, for this uh, exercise, it will be mostly aerial. Uh, we are going to use the uh, choppers, and uh, we'll be emphasizing on marine, specific marine uh, species of animals. And we are talking about whales, we are talking about dolphins, we are talking about sharks, we are talking about dugongs, the ones you can see from, from above. But doesn't mean that uh, the others like uh, coral fish are, are not important. So those ones will be gotten, and we have been getting data on these all along since uh, we started um, uh, these exercises of uh, collecting data for marine species. But for this exercise, our key areas will be the big, the mega, what we call the mega fauna, the big animals of the ocean. Yes, so that, and you'll be partnering very closely with KWS, because they are the ones who are the lead. Now, Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute will be coming in uh, to back up and to help, uh, especially in the marine waters. That's where we come in very strongly. And we have been working with the, the fisheries but we have been working, Kenya Marine has been working very closely with KWS. This is not the first time. We have been working very closely with Kenya Marine, uh, sorry, Kenya Marine has been working very closely with the uh, Kenya Wildlife Service in terms of sensors, in terms of conservation. So our partnership began a long time ago. So we, we, we're just continuing. Uh, um, uh, before we take a quick break, maybe just tell us, I mean, uh, how, in terms of uh, the nautical miles, how far uh, will this particular research go as far as uh, our Kenyan territorial waters are concerned? We're going about five nautical miles. We are not going very deep. I understand uh, from the scientists who will be doing it, 
will be more inshore, uh, five so uh, kilometers out, and uh, we'll be walking all the way from, not walking, all the way from Kiunga to, to Vanga, and we'll be doing like one kilometer, whereby we come in, go in, come in, go in, so we are not going to do everything, and we're going to take, take a sample, and we'll be having about uh, one kilometer distance from all the way from Vanga to Kiunga, and we'll be able to uh, get the animals we have talked about, and pro from there we'll be able to estimate uh, roughly what is there in our Kenyan waters in terms of marine mega. Mega is big. Uh, animals like the whales, sharks, dogongs, and uh, dugongs, and, uh, and sea turtles. So basically that's what we'll be doing together with, uh, with KWS. Okay, lastly, maybe any special attention that perhaps the government and those tasked with conducting this exercise need to consider as, as far as uh, you know, doing this particular research uh, in, uh, you know, in the Indian Ocean. Uh, nothing. First, first and foremost, we want to thank the government of Kenya. Because as you heard the minister saying that uh, this is fully funded by the government of Kenya. We are not looking for donors, so we are doing this on our own. And as we move on, we'll be able to get what we call the mega data. And this data will be very important in terms of um, uh, conservation, in terms of uh, tourism. So that's where we are going, Mutai. And uh, we hope uh, this is not the beginning. I mean, this is the beginning. We are supposed to be doing it every three years, uh, but, of course, but of course, because of resources, it has been a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, uh, that is uh, CS Najib Balala, who is just getting back from uh, the trip. And uh, as we conclude here, we expect to bring you... Well, I think it will be interesting to try and get the experience from uh, the CS and, of course, and the Director General, the Kenya WS Director General, that is uh, retired Brigadier uh, J.M. Waweru. And you can see they are coming out of the chopper. Uh, perhaps we'll try and just get a feel of the experience. He has participated in the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, animal sensors, uh, I mean, the exercise of uh, getting uh, the number of, uh, you know, the animal population in uh, the country. And uh, perhaps I'll ask the CS and the DG to give us a minute to perhaps try and understand exactly what they experience. Uh, when I was here, we are live on NTV and uh, Mr. Digi also will try and perhaps tell Kenyans they've witnessed you taking off uh, using the chopper. Uh, just bring us and give us a sense of how uh, that particular exercise was and uh, what you've been able to achieve so far. Well, uh, we just uh, took off with the chopper. We went to do the survey, uh, basically to launch the survey in the National Wildlife Survey. And actually we saw almost 20 elephants. So the numbers that we have been told about 35 elephants only in Shimba Hills, probably they have more. But the last census for 20, 2017, probably the numbers have increased. But the most important thing here is that we want to verify the numbers that we had and the numbers now we are creating. Every three years by law, we are supposed to do census. So we are here, it's very exciting to see there, but also we saw, we saw other animals. We saw dick dicks, we have seen war thugs, as well as we were trying to look the sable antelope, but there are very few. There are only 50, less than 50 here in this region. And uh, definitely with now the timing uh, being uh, almost midday, so it's hot for them to be outside. So this census is going to continue. It should be ready, concluded uh, in three months' time. Uh, and we say it very clear that the methodology used uh, for this census is internationally recognized so that the results and the data we have created is acceptably international. The purpose of, of this census is not only understanding what numbers do we have, but also how do we mitigate and, 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 and take measures of conservation. Because without knowing the data, the right data, we will not be able to put measures in place to conserve, as well as to mitigate the challenges. So this is a very important uh, survey. 
and is funded fully by the Kenyan government. Other surveys have taken place before, of spe specifically maybe I can say rhinos, I can say elephants, I can say lions, I can say uh, other, other, other species, but today we are having an integrated national wildlife survey so that we have all animals included, rather of ignoring other species and focusing on the endangered species. Because you have seen the Sitatunga species of antelopes, we don't have clear numbers how many they are. They are very uh, they're endangered. You have seen the Ron antelope in Ruma. There are only about uh, 15 of them. Uh, the bongos that we have in Mount Kenya, the ones in captivity are only about l less than 50. And then the others are in the, in the wilderness about uh, less than 100. Thank you so much. Uh, Bonadigi, maybe perhaps also just give us uh, you know, a sneak preview of how was the feeling? Uh, because you're also uh, up there with the CS and what did you manage to see? Uh, indeed, uh, as the CS has just mentioned, we were able to see some animals. Uh, we were able to see uh, elephants, around 20 or so, and in one small cluster in the Mwaluganji area. Uh, just that goes to tell us that uh, there are animals here, probably more than we, we, we imagine. Uh, and of course, uh, the most important animal, particularly in this area, is the sable antelope. The sable antelope is uh, a rare antelope. Uh, we have only about 50 uh, remaining in Kenya. Uh, and of course, uh, the neighboring Tanzania also has some. Uh, so we want to establish during this census exactly how many uh, of those antelopes we have and the other species of uh, animals that are there. So for us, this is a very exciting time. As we said uh, during the uh, speech, it's a scientific process. Uh, and in fact, as we went just now, we had a sci scientist on board. Uh, he was able to use a GPS location to be able to tell where those elephants were. And he does a voice recording as he also records uh, on a card. So uh, it's all done scientifically. And this scientific process is, uh, is uh, used worldwide. So it's something that is a method that is acceptable. It's not uh, one we created ourselves. It's actually the way other countries uh, in the world actually do they are KWS is a key institution towards achieving this particular course and understand that it requires a uh, you know uh, human resource as well as you know the government pumping money as well so is uh, the institution ready to deploy the required number of uh, human resource to uh, make sure that the government achieves this uh, you know data collection indeed uh, we are prepared uh, and this uh, is an exercise that uh, we've been looking forward to uh, in the last year in fact it was supposed to be last year uh, but this year we've now started, uh, we are all ready, we have enough scientists on the ground, we have enough uh, ground troops, uh, together with the National Air Support uh, Department, we will be able to deploy uh, aircraft uh, and again our partners. We have a lot of partners that uh, we partner with when we're doing this, uh, who also assist us with their equipment, including aircraft. So yes, we are ready for this and we are going to deliver on time. And I suppose also that there might could be uh, some of the challenges that uh, might occur uh, alongside maybe while on you know th th this particular exercise, like uh, for instance, uh, you know, human encroaching into the animal habitat. How and what interventions rather have you put in place to ensure uh, that such kind of uh, incidences will be addressed adequately? Actually, um, now that you mention it, what we pick up from this census is not just the animal count. It's also about the incursions that we have, the incursions that we have either by human beings uh, or livestock uh, inside the parks. Because other than giving us the numbers of animals, it will also provide us information on where there are weak spots for us to be able to, uh, to mitigate, uh, to prevent uh, that from happening. So it's not just about numbers of wildlife, it is also about such issues as you've just mentioned, which will then be able to mitigate on. Well, of course, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that was the Director General uh, uh, KWS, uh, Mr. J.M. Retired Brigadier, sorry, Brig Brigadier, Brigadier Retired uh, J.M. Waweru, who just uh, got out of the chopper, accompanied by uh, Tourism CS Nazib Balala, giving us a glimpse of how uh, that uh, particular, I mean, they conducted uh, just uh, a, a census here around the Shimba Hills in Kwale County, and you've just heard the kind of animals that they were able uh, to see. And perhaps this is uh, an exercise that will be happening in various parts of the country. You heard the government has deployed 
uh, necessary resources to ensure uh, that all the conservancies, all uh, the uh, animal habitat, be it in the land and sea, uh, that uh, the government will be able to consider all those areas in terms of getting the proper information and data uh, with regards to the uh, animal population here in the country. And you heard that once this is done, that is in the next three months, then uh, the data will be presented before the cabinet and will be officially commissioned uh, by the president. And uh, you heard that uh, this uh, particular exercise has been uh, fully funded by the Kenyan government and it will cost uh, approximately 250 million shillings and it will take uh, three months. So that's it from here in Shimba Hills in Kuala County. My colleagues, uh, Jen Gatwiri and Karim Rajan, uh, we're glad to have given you uh, to have, uh, uh, given you this particular broadcast and we thank you for uh, being with NTV uh, but make sure you don't miss out on our subsequent bulletins because we'll also uh, be there to just give you an in-depth analysis of what uh, was about uh, uh, especially as uh, far as uh, the official commissioning of uh, animal census in the country uh, being uh, done by CS Nazi Balala here in Kuala County. <laughs>
and we'll be able to conserve better when we have done the counting as well. Thank you very much. Any question? Yes. What type of resources? Animals or financial? Well, today we are doing a national census, so we want to know that resource. How many across the board? Rather of every day, we are focusing on rhinos, because rhinos are endangered, or we are focusing on elephants, because they are endangered, or lions, because of they are of interest. Today we are doing an integrated of all species. Uh, across the country. And you have been told also areas like Marsabet, areas like, like uh, uh, Turkana, even those areas have not been covered very well in terms of counting of the wildlife in that area. But this team is going to cover the entire country and the methodology, as I say, is internationally acceptable uh, globally. Yes. Well, when we they say about counting for this exercise, is outside the protected area. So it will be inside and outside protected area. We already know where their corridors are. We know where the protected areas. We know where pr private ranches and conservancies are. This exercise is going to co cover all these areas. Thank you. With your permission, Chief Guest, we can have the national anthem, and then we can have ministry uh, there. Just a minute before the uh, national anthem, we bring the vote of thanks. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank you, Waziri, very much uh, for leading this process. You know, when you go in heaven, God will be very kind with you <laughs> that you counted his resources and you are able to lead in the protection. I also want to appreciate our principal secretary that also when your time comes and you go in heaven, you will be remembered for assisting Waziri to make sure that this resource was well protected. <laughs> May the Lord hear your prayers. You will be here for a long time. I also want to thank uh, our chairs for both. Uh, Chair of Board of Trustees of KWS, Madam Betty uh, Maitreo, who has uh, sacrificed uh, quite a bit and leading the board and making sure we get all the necessary approvals. In fact, Wazir, I must say, yesterday the board had to sit to make sure that all the approvals we required uh, have been done. I also want to appreciate the WRTI board. It's a new baby. But uh, you can see, they have not tackled enough. They want to begin running, and we will support them. We want to thank our director, especially our director general, um, for his leadership uh, for us, the entire team at KWS, that made this possible. We thank uh, NSC uh, director, uh, because without them, that area of fact uh, will not happen. We also want to appreciate uh, the various scientists starting with Dr. Mondi at KWS, uh, and all the other uh, scientists that will be leading this process. Let me tell you, Waziri, from the data you just saw, that physical count, the one of walking, is actually walking. And so there is going to be a team that is going to sacrifice, and many times they will take a number of days. Without showering, uh, without a warm meal, have to do this count. So let's uh, thank them. Finally, let me appreciate the media uh, for being very supportive. We please continue to encourage you to highlight this. Remember, in the history, we will be remembered to have been present today and to have been able to talk about conservation and the counting of numbers. The point, please, to work in the corner of Pamoja, to pick him a coffee. The Kwanzaa, 
Tushukuru Mwenyezi Mungu. Ya pili tutashukuru waziri wetu eh, na timu yote. Alafu ya tatu tujishukuru sisi wenyewe wote kwa kuwa hapo. So tuwekeni makofi ya kwanza. Na nita msijali nikisema moja, mbili, tatu. Haya. Moja. Mbili. Tatu. Tunga. Tungua. Thank you. Mungu wabariki. Thank you. 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 Thank